Hello everyone and welcome back to Cobian History. In this video I'm visiting the vineyard Chateau Pape Clément in the region of Bordeaux in southern France. We will have a look at the chateau itself, its gardens and most importantly its wine and the winemaking process. As you can see from the gardens here the current owner is a collector of stuff so you have some random art pieces here. This is the chateau itself and our wine tour started by going inside it to show the current vineyard's owner's private collection of wine bottles. These were collected over a number of years. You can see a variety of different vintages here, the oldest going all the way back to the 1890s. This wine isn't to drink of course, despite what people say, Wine doesn't always get better with age, and especially if it's this old. If you tried to taste it, you'd be very disappointed. It's more a collector's item. As you might have noticed, there are some huge bottles here. And the guide actually told us that this is the second largest wine bottles they make here. You can see all the sizes of wine bottles they make on a row here. Before going into the winemaking process, I'll go over a little bit of the history of this vineyard first. In the gardens there are some really old olive trees. This one for example is over 1800 years old. The vineyard itself however only came about over a millennium after this olive tree was planted. The first vine was planted in the year 1300, which makes this vineyard the oldest planted vineyard in the whole region. It was acquired by the family of Bertrand de Gott, who was elected Pope in 1306. His papal name became Clement V, and that's how Chateau Pape Clément gets its name. With it having a papal history, there also were some papal artifacts displayed throughout the facility. There were also some nice looking medieval chests spread around, which I can appreciate. Now we'll go over the part which you've probably been waiting for, the actual winemaking process. First we go to the vineyard. At time of recording the harvest was gonna take place about one week after we were there, so you can already see the good amount of grapes on the vines. The guide told us that they don't use any artificial pesticides. They do use copper sulfate. By that I'm assuming he means the Bordeaux mixture, which was originally developed in the region around Bordeaux in the 19th century. You might also notice that there are a lot of roses spread around the vines. The reason why these roses are here aren't just aesthetical, it's because roses are quite sensitive to pests and disease. If there is a pest or disease going around, the roses would be affected first. So they serve as a warning system to give the vineyard enough time to prepare for any threat to the vines. You might also see a lot of grass and weeds going through the vines and that's actually good for the vines as well as it adds some biodiversity to the vineyard. During the winter months before there are any buds on the vines, sheep are brought in to graze on any grass or weeds so it doesn't get too overgrown. But the vineyard has to be careful that they take the sheep away before the buds are starting to form on the vines because if the sheep are kept on the vineyard too long they will also start to eat the fresh buds of the vine if given the chance. The soil of the vineyard also matters. For example these are grapes for making red wine and the soil in which the vines are planted is a gravelly soil. The gravel soil has a lot of exposed rocks which heat up during the day and also reflect heat back upwards onto the grapes. These vines are for red grapes making red wine. They have thicker skins and this extra heat radiation helps them gain their flavor. They also have vineyards for white wine but they are grown on clay soils as the white grapes have thinner skins and if they were grown on these gravel soils, the extra heat that the stones would radiate onto the grapes would ruin them. So there is a big map of all the winemaking regions and within those regions there are different appellations. 
The Appalachians are basically grading the quality of the wines grown there. The guide pointed out that this vineyard was in one of the most prestigious Appalachians, which is probably why the price of the wine is so high. From the vineyard we went through this nice herb and flower garden to the facility where the grapes are brought after harvest. In this area the grapes are inspected and any bad looking grapes are discarded. After this the grapes will undergo one month of vinification. This is the process of turning grapes into wine and it starts by crushing the grapes. Now crushing is different from pressing. With crushing you just break open the skin so the juice has a way to escape. Vinification works different for red, white and rosé wines. So because in this vineyard they're making red wine, I'll be focusing on that process. After being crushed the grapes are put in these large vats. The vats used here are wooden ones but they also have vats made up of more modern materials. In these vats is where the process of maceration takes place. This is the process of mixing and soaking the juice of the grapes with the leftovers of the grapes. During this process fermentation starts as well. Special yeasts can be added to help in this fermentation but on the skin of the grapes there are also natural yeasts which can aid in fermenting without having to add any extra. With red wine the maceration process can take a few weeks, although this time can vary depending on the type of wine. During this time the juice and what is left of the grapes have to be mixed frequently. There are different ways of doing this. The first way is to use this tool. Someone will open up the top of the vat and mix the juice which settles at the bottom with the leftover skins which tend to float on top. So this is the manual way, but there is also an automatic way. In some of these tanks there is a system which pumps the juice from the bottom and pumps it to the top of the barrel where it's sprayed over the grape skins. You might be wondering why are all these vats leaking? And they're not actually leaking, but they're not in use at the moment, so they have to pump water into the vats so they retain their shape. If they were just to be left dry when not in use, the wood would dry out and warp, which would make the barrels lose their ability to hold liquid. Here you can see some footage of what the inside of these barrels look like. The color of the wine depends on how long the grapes undergo this maceration process. For red wines they undergo the process as I've just described. For rosé, they undergo a similar process as rosé wines are usually also made from red wine grapes. In contrast to the weeks of maceration it takes to create red wine, with rosé they only do it for a few hours, at max two days. This means that the chemicals from the skins and the pips aren't all absorbed in the juice, giving it a lighter, more clear color. Just as a side note, there are some other ways of making rosé as well. And with white wines, they use different types of grapes, they use the white grapes, and usually this whole maceration process is skipped. Before continuing with the winemaking process, I just want to take a second to shout out my Patreon page. This video was recorded earlier this month when I was in Bordeaux. I also made another video about the Musée L'Aquitaine, which goes through the history of the whole region of Aquitaine in which Bordeaux is based. That video is available on my Patreon page and you can get access to it from the $1 tier. So if you have just $1 to spare, please check out my Patreon and you'll get access to all the Patreon exclusive videos I've made over the years. The link to my Patreon page will be in the description below as well as in the end card of this video. Now back to the winemaking process. At the end of the maceration process, due to the pressure of the amount in these barrels, grapes that were at the bottom have been pressed already by gravity, so the juice at the bottom of the barrel is pumped out, leaving what's left over to be brought to the press to extract the leftover juice. 
Once the grapes have been pressed, the wine is barreled and left to age for 18 months. The winemakers actually need to check the wine from time to time, as they will fill the barrel at the beginning, but the wood will absorb some of the wine and the alcohol naturally evaporates as well. So they need to be able to check the barrels, which is why there is a cork at the top. And when they do, they'll find that the level of the wine in the barrel has sunk. Now this is bad because not only wine is lost, but if there is air at the top of the barrel, that will cause the wine to oxidize and go bad. So from time to time, they'll have to top up the barrels to make sure there's no air at the top. The mid sections of the barrels are often painted red as well. And this is to cover up any wine that is spilled during the refilling. The guide actually told a quite interesting story about this in the Middle Ages. As mentioned before, the wooden barrels would soak up some of the wine and natural evaporation of alcohol would take away a little more. So in the medieval times, when the winemakers checked their barrels, they were surprised that there was wine missing. At first they thought, that the workers of the vineyard were sneaking into the cellars to drink some of the wine. And that's why the amount of wine in the barrel was reduced. So they started locking their cellars so no one could access the aging barrels without them knowing. Of course, back then they didn't know about the natural evaporation of alcohol. So they came up with another story that during the night, angels would come down and actually sip some of the wine because if it wasn't the workers and no one could enter the cellar, it must have been angels that have been drinking the wine. And you can see this sometimes in paintings of medieval angels. They sometimes have rosy cheeks and it is said that that is because they're still a little tipsy from drinking all that wine. Now, I don't know how much of that story is actually true or if it's just been made up recently. There is something called the angel's share which is a saying originating from cognac making, which also refers to some of the alcohol being soaked up or evaporated within the barrel. But as far as I could find, records of this saying only date back to last century. So the story, while it is a fun one, might have just come about only recently and didn't actually originate in the Middle Ages. If you do know of any medieval sources regarding this, please let me know in the comments below. Also, some of the leftover skins and bits might have been brought over from the juice and these gradually sink down to the bottom of the barrel. The sediment layer that is formed at the bottom is called lees. And this lees isn't wanted in the end wine product. For most wines that is the case anyway. Because for some types of white wine the lees is actually kept in and frequently remixed with the liquid again. But for red wine this isn't desired. So a few times in this aging process, they actually have to pump the wine out of this barrel and put it into a new barrel without transferring the lease. They do this using a suction hose. So they would pump the original barrel empty while filling the new barrel with the partly aged wine. Thanks to this clear and transparent section on the hose, they can actually inspect the wine that is getting pumped through. So using this, they can see when lease is coming up, at which point they know they've reached the bottom and they have to stop pumping. In this video, I've covered the winemaking process from a modern point of view. But if you're interested in the medieval winemaking process, I've got a whole video about that as well, which you can check out on screen right now. And don't forget to also check out my Patreon page. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, especially my $25 patrons, G. David and Parker Dye.